Hey everybody, Christopher Naiman. Well, guess what? I got my free motion embroidery foot in for my Singer 401A. So guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to show you a little sample on how to use the free motion embroidery foot. Okay, stay with me. I'll be right back. Okay, welcome back everybody. Alright, so let's talk about the setup for this. First of all, you have to use an embroidery bobbin thread, and I have two kinds that I use. There's the finishing touch bobbin thread, which I use on all my computerized sewing machines. It works wonderful for them. And then there's the bobbin fill by Madeira, which I find works great on this mechanical machine here. Now, you have to lower your feed dogs on a regular sewing machine. But because this machine is my Vintage Singer 401A, they didn't include a way to lower the feed dogs. What they did was they included a way to raise the plate. Now on this machine what you do is there is a lever right here and this is these calls for the darning and you're going to lift that uh, up and what that's going to do, let me show you here, okay, that lifts the plate up which lowers the feed dogs. So the feed dogs really don't move like in the modern machines or the newer other type of brand machines from vintage. The feed dogs actually stay the same, it's just the plate comes up so it, it makes it believe that the feed dogs are lowered so they're not going to mess up with your fabric, mess your fabric, okay? Now, for my embroidery, I've got a cotton quilting thread in here, very fine cotton quilting thread, but it's a fuzzy kind. It's going to fill up very, very good. You can see how fuzzy it is. It's the cheap kind, and it works great for embroidery because it fills up your coloring book, so to speak. And I have that coming off on my thread stand down there. See that? Okay. Now, next, we're going to use a spring action embroidery hoop, and it's just a small one. So I'm just going to do a test. I'm going to use a tearaway stabilizer and then I'm going to have the fabric. So let me set my camera up on the tripod and then I'm going to show you how we're going to do this, okay? All right. Okay, so here we go. So here's a spring embroidery hoop. And as you can see, what's nice, what, what you have to use for machine embroidery is a very thin hoop. And there's different kinds of hoops. Um, this isn't a class I'm giving you totally on this free motion work. I just want to show you a little bit of a sample of what you'll do on what this machine will do here. So, but I do have a free motion embroidery video you can watch. I'll put a link for that in the bottom description of, on YouTube here on my video, okay? All right. So, and by the way, that was my number one best sell best viewing video is the free motion video. Okay. So, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put um, some embroidery stabilizer here. This is tearaway. And then I've got some of my leftover shirt fabric I have lots of scrap fabrics left over on many of my shirts. Not all of them, but some of them I do. And then you're going to place this in the hoop. Push this down into the hoop. Let me see if I can do this here. This might be a little... There we go. I think that stabilizer is too... Yeah, this is too heavy. I don't have a thin one on me. So I'll just, I'll just double this fabric here. I'll just double this fabric see if this will fit in here. That stabilizer is too thick for this hoop. Yeah, okay, see that fits better. So I, I'm just doing two layers, all right? But you're going to want to get a thinner stabilizer than that because it's to fit. All right, so here we go. Here it goes in here. All right, now what you want to do, like I said, is your um, turn your tension down, and then you're going to want to bring up your bobbin thread, okay? Bring up your bobbin thread. You know, I discovered free motion embroidery in the early 90s. I'm going to tell you what happened. I saw Joyce Drexler on Sewing with Nancy. I bought a video at the sewing store, and it was a video with Joyce Drexler when she had that curly bi-level perm from that era. Remember when we all had curly bi-level perms? Um, yeah, we all. that was the era. It was the late 70s, early 80s, okay? But um, this video I bought, geez, in the early 90s, so it was already pretty old by then. But anyway, she was doing free motion embroidery on a FAF computerized, a FAF mechanical machine with Nancy, and I got so intrigued by it, I loved it. But, so here's what you do. She used to, this is what Joyce Drexler used to say, give your machine a love pat. What that means is, on these older machines, they're not computer, so they're not gonna yell at you if you forget to put your foot down, okay? And what I mean by yell, they're not gonna beep at you, okay? You have to remember to put your foot down. And I explain all this in my free motion embroidery video. So you're going to want to watch that. And watch it thoroughly all the way through. Because I talk a lot through it and I give you a lot of pointers. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to, I brought up the bobbin thread. And I'm just going to do, I'm just going to do a quick little design here just to show you real quick. Oh, this is on zigzag, by the way. I have this set on zigzag. And my thread is a cheap cotton quilting thread. 
And the reason why I like it for doing embroidery is because it's fuzzy. The thread is all fuzzy, or what people call linty. I love that because it fills up the area that you're embroidering much better. Okay? All right, so let me take a couple zigzag pieces, uh, stitches here to lock this in place. And then I'm going to cut off this thread here. Lift this foot, go under there and cut off whatever I can under here. I can cut more off later. Now, the only thing I don't like about this the fact is we have an all-metal sewing machine, and they make a plastic foot for this. If I could find the, the, the metal foot that came, free motion foot that came with this machine originally, I would love to buy it. But everything you see is this plastic. So when you go and screw it on here, don't screw it too tight, but screw it tight with your fingers. Don't use a screwdriver because you can snap it. All right, so here I go. Now, I remember when I used to show free motion embroidery at the sewing stores before um, computerized embroidery came along. This is, they always show, now I'm not probably gonna make this very perfect, but they used to show how to do an A. They would do, do initials. You got to move slow to fill this in, okay? And then they would bring it up like this. It's been a while since I've done this one. Okay. Okay, so it's not all that perfect, but it gives you an idea. This is how they used to do initials and stuff years ago when they advertised these machines. Yes, they'll do embroidery. And you had to move the, the hoop by yourself. That's what they meant. Now then we can switch this back to a straight stitch. I just switch it back to a straight stitch. And then if you're a quilter, oh, let's see, that's a little zig, that's a little zigzag stitch there. Let's go set this back to the straight stitch, which is Let's see, it's uh, A and K. So I gotta switch this to A, turn this knob to K, center needle position, let's see. Yeah, there it is. And if you're a quilter, you can do your stippling. And all your quilters know stippling is just doing like jigsaw puzzle pieces. Now, notice as I always preach in all my videos, the free mo the flatbed extension table here. Look how much easier you can lay your hands up here to do the free motion work. You've got proper ergonomics. You don't have to go like go like this with your hands hanging over. I'm laying here comfortably. I could free motion or quilt all day, and there's not going to be any pain. I explain all that in my vi my other videos. I as I told you earlier. And look how nice this works. You see that? Now you can use a bigger hoop than this. You can get a bigger hoop in here because there's still some more space here on the side here for, for a bigger hoop. But you gotta make sure it's, it's a thin hoop so it fits under that foot. All right, let me take this out and show you. Like I said, this was just a sampler just to show you about the foot. And there you go. There's the A, there's the little stippling I did, and that's it. That's the capability of this machine, all right? And as I continue with more videos coming on, coming down the line, I'll be showing you more tech, little techniques that this machine can do. This machine can do a lot that the modern machines could do. The only difference is you have to be aware of everything. Like I said, you have to always make sure you put the foot down. Where the newer machines, if you forget to put your foot down, you start sewing, it's going to beep at you. You know, you have to do manual setting. But one thing about these machines, and I did some uh, metallic thread on here before, it's it blows me away. In fact, let me load up some metallic thread real quick and I'll show you what it does, okay? All right, be right back. Okay, so I've got some sulky metallic thread here. Can you see that? Sulky metallic thread. And what I want to tell you, I forgot to tell you earlier. Uh, oh, let's see what I do with my little, here it is. I forgot to tell you earlier, I'm using a top stitch needle, size 14. And I'm going to keep the top stitch needle in here to do the free motion with the metallic thread. Now, I just loaded this up and I have not tested it yet, okay? And remember, I always tell you in my videos, test, test, test. So this is going to be my actual test. So if I screw this up on here, this is going to tell me what my adjustments need to be. So we're going to see, going from that cotton quilting thread with the same setup, the same needle, now I'm going to use sulky thread, okay? And... Uh, a lot of people say, well, I don't like sulky thread. My dealer says not to use it. Well, I'm not going to go into that argument again with people, but I'm going to tell you, I always have success with all these brands of threads, and uh, I wouldn't have such beautiful work if the threads didn't work for me. So let's see if this works for me. This is my first time I'm going to test it. So let's just test the straight stitch first. I pulled out my bobbin thread, and now I'm going to cut this thread here. 
raise my foot to cut this. Okay. And let's see. I'm going to do stippling with metallic thread. Alright, let's set it to zigzag and see what it looks like in zigzag. Okay, zigzag again is B and L. Move my dial here to B and this over here to L. Okay, and then my zigzag Y. Let's see what it looks like in zigzag. Yeah, so the only thing I can say is that the plastic free motion embroidery foot is the only one that they're making or they've made for this machine recently. And if I could get a hold of the actual metallic one, and I tried, like I showed you in my last video, I tried getting a different one, a hobby foot, that they say works for this machine, but it didn't. So anyway, there it is, beautiful. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful, no problems with this at all. All right, let's take that out. And there's the sulky metallic thread on a Singer Vintage 401A. That's what I can tell you guys. So go ahead and practice. Maybe you don't want to sew as fast as I do, but the way you've always sewed with regular threads, they always say, sew fast and you move slow. All right? All right. Have some fun. Practice with this. Okay? And remember what I said. Do not tighten this foot with a screwdriver because it's plastic. Just hand tighten and make sure it's nice and snug. See, that's that's on there pretty snug. Let me take this off here. See, I can unscrew with my finger. Now, if you don't have enough strength to make it snug tight with your hands, do a screwdriver, but don't do it real tight. And here's that free motion foot. See? That's the free motion foot that we just used. Okay, guys? Everybody take care. Talk to you next time. Bye now.